one of the realities of this uh, scenario that it, 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 and we said we're simulating a live environment, right? So we're trying to simulate a, an actual physical machine. Many of you have, you see in the upper right corner, your own Gmail account. And if you do not go to the trouble to sign out of your Gmail, weird things start to happen. Now, what am I saying? You are going to use a specific Gmail login to get onto the screen, and then you're going to open a new tab. When you do, this little ditty right here is going to show up in the upper right corner. That is a plugin that is tied to that Gmail profile. It's going to display the option to access my computer. From there, when you click access my computer, you will see Banshee on the screen. However, let's pretend that you have other tabs open and you're still logged into your own Gmail. And then you log in on another tab with the assigned Gmail for this activity. Things get weird in browsers. You had a question or a comment? Yeah. Um, you have any disadvantages that you're using from? So I see that you're currently using Google Chrome. Does that mean that for this to work, you would recommend using Google Chrome? Because that's a great that's a great question. For this to work, you must use Google Chrome. And you could have a Google account that isn't Gmail. That's possible. Yes. Um, it doesn't matter for other browsers. Just like that. So Lyman just asked, it doesn't matter if you're signed in on other browsers with that if we do this. Uh, the short answer is yes. However, I have seen weird things happen when multiple browsers, multiple tabs, and multiple logins are in the mix. So one of the things I would recommend is that you intentionally go through all of your browsers, sign out of your Gmail, just do it. So that when you go into this screen, you see something like this, because that's what you want, right? And then you go in to sign in with your, what was it? STX Penguin Avenger at gmail.com, right? Now, when you sign in here, it's gonna ask you if you wanna switch profiles. The answer is yes, because you want your Chrome browser to pull the plugins that are tied to that profile, right? When you install, prof when you install plugins like the remote access plugin, now let's say that you do this and you sign in properly and then you open a new tab and you don't see the plugin for remote access. So you need to, and when you click, you get this screen, right? You get, okay, access my computer. When you click access my computer, now you can see Banshee there, right? Let's pretend that doesn't happen and you don't see this. Then you go up, see everybody see this URL right here? You just manually enter remotedesktop.google.com and hit enter. And that will bring you to the place where you can see access my computer. Now, if it doesn't, go back and double check again about your browsers and whether or not you're still logged in somewhere, because I swear to you, it's the weirdest thing. Now, what happens if you, um, let's say what happens, you've closed everything, but you love that feature in your browser that saves your passwords. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like to save my passwords when I'm using my browser. I don't want to remember all my passwords. That's a, that's a buzzkill. I just don't like that. So you, you say yes, 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 yes. Remember, 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 remember. Just makes everything easy, doesn't it? Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Ooh, there you are. Direct flight to the website of interest. I'm going to stop there before I get crazy. All right, well, so the thing is, you may need to do this with your browser as well. You may need to go into settings. You may need to go into privacy and security. You may need to clear the browser data. Why? Because if you've stored passwords and you've had other things in the mix, you're, what happens is that uh, the stuff, the cache that's in your browser can get corrupted or it can under the right circumstances with a cross-site scripting attack, it can start doing weird things because of what's stored in it. Just trust me and clear, 
clear the browser, right? And, and you'd be like, well, I have to log in again. If you haven't reset your password on some of your important websites in a while, now's the time to do it, okay? Just, just trust me on that, all right? So I wanted to... Uh huh. Uh huh. Thank you, Suleiman, for sharing that hacker tip on how to display the hidden values of a password as it's entered. Yeah. Um, uh, in the interest of time, and because our class today has doesn't have anything to do with that, we'll. We'll get back to that, okay? But thank you for sharing that, yeah. It's always always an interesting day in our cyber classes. All right, so where are we going next? Where are we going next, okay? Here is something that I thought would become abundantly clear and evidently it has it. A member of this class, and I'm not mentioning their name, has already submitted the entire solution. Now I could be an error, but there's a submission and I'm just assuming like the whole thing was worked up. There is something you're supposed to do at the beginning of this solution and I'm supposed to have in my inbox. And if you already have finished the solution or submitted for the solution, um, th there's an issue. Now I have not yet had the chance to check what your classmate has submitted. Maybe the classmate submitted the virtual system access availability options into Blackboard instead of emailing it to me. And what I'd like everybody to do right now, right now in class live, I'm gonna stop recording, okay? I'm gonna check the submission of the other student to see if they submitted the entire thing or just the, hey, here's the hours I'd like to use. If this student in our class has submitted the entire thing, before I got an email requesting permission to muck with someone else's Kool-Aid, as a matter of grace, I'm gonna declare a mulligan and I'm gonna blot out the entire submission that was, and I'm not, again, I'm not mentioning any names, but the individual that uh, did this, I think is, is uh, live in our session and we have like 10 entries in the list there. So, I mean, I'm not, and I don't wanna start a, like a, you know, a scavenger hunt here to try to figure out who did what. And I don't want anybody to confess either, all right? Oh, I did it, it was me. I don't want that either, okay? But what I do want you to know is one of the responsibilities of cybersecurity work is knowing exactly what you're supposed to do, following explicit documentation, like a checklist. Did I mention checklists as a tool that you use for incident handlers so they don't miss something? Because when you respond to an incident, one of the first things that happens is the, oh crap moment. Now I'm speaking plainly here and some would say this is bad taste. I could use some very colorful language to explain some things that I've seen firsthand in responding to incidents. You can expect the unexpected. One of the first rules of incident handling is put your seat trays and your, Put your, put your seats and your trade tables and they're locked in upright positions, fasten your seatbelts. The captain has lit the fasten seatbelt sign. You're gonna have some turbulence, right? If you're responding to an incident that involves cyber, somebody or something created a mess. And that's gonna have some twists and turns. And wouldn't it be nice if all of that was tagged on you? Because when you went to the incident to respond, oh, you missed a step and now you got egg on your face. Oh, and the whole thing is ruined because surprise, you messed it all up. People are gonna start investigating you if this happens more than once, because they're gonna wonder, are you a doofus? Or did you accidentally, quote unquote, accidentally, hint, hint, wink, wink, stomp, stomp. Did you accidentally trash some evidence because somebody else is slipping you a C note on the side? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, now this part I am recording. So what I'm gonna do is stop the recording. I'm gonna check the submission. I'm gonna see if somebody submitted the entire solution without requesting proper permission. And if they did, if he or she did, I'm gonna blot it out. 
okay? I'm just gonna erase the whole thing and say, oh, that's a mulligan. Meanwhile, I want all of you to pull down the virtual system access availability options. And I want you to beam back to me, all right, what hours do you want uh, to have access to the system so that we can start mapping out. And I will confirm an email. See, the, I think the instruction said, you're gonna send two emails, didn't it? Yes. Okay. So I'm very glad that we're getting comments from students. Thank you. There was mention of two emails. And in case that's confusing, let's, let's clarify. One of the emails has to do with, hey, this is when I want to get on the system. Why? The last thing you want to do is log into the system while somebody else is live because it's going to look like it's being hacked while you're trying to do your job. Do you understand what I'm saying? That gets messy in a hurry. And then things, then things fly off the rail. All right, number two. The second thing you want to email is, hey, now that I've established when my access is, do I have permission to get into the Kool-Aid for Sydney Corinth? And then I'm going to respond back with, yes, this documents your authorized access to Sydney Corinth system. Please coordinate with the IT help desk to reset the password. That's what you're going to get back from me. This is like a real world scenario, right? So then you're going to pretend that happened after you get my email back. Once you get my email back. And then you're going to proceed with the rest. Now, I could be talking completely out of term and what the individual posted was completely appropriate given the instructions, in which case I would owe them an apology, right? But I'm going to go and check now and I'm going to stop recording and um, two emails. Is everybody clear about what each one does? Okay, we have windows of opportunity today, tomorrow, and Sunday to get on this system, and half of today is gone. All right, 